Welcome! I'm Peter van Bergen and I want to tell you about my latest book, Earth Economics. That's because I'm an Earth Economist. Earth Economics started with a simple idea. I needed a closed economy, an economy that did not trade with other economies. And it's difficult to find an economy that doesn't trade in modern world. So suddenly I had this idea. Earth. Because we don't trade with Mars or Moon yet. Anyhow, why did I need the closed economy? Because I have to teach undergraduates and introduce them to the basic principles of economics. And to do so is very boring, because you have to talk about a very simple and basic economy. An economy that doesn't trade. You want to keep things as simple as possible. But then you can't discuss policy, because there is no real world example. Right, until you realize that Earth is a real world example. Because if all governments do exactly the same, then that's the same as if one government would act. And we have seen governments acting in the same way many times during history. For example, the response, the ultimate response to the stagflation of the 1970s, of the first oil crisis, which tried, uh, generated high inflation and high unemployment, was structural reform, introduction of market economics. The 2009 financial crisis led to a response with old-fashioned Keynesian policies, demand stimulus, lax monetary policy, and that was the way almost all governments around the world reacted to the financial crisis. And now at this moment we see something else. We see austerity measures, especially in Europe, but also in the emerging economies. Not yet in the United States, but that might come. See, you don't need to have one government, one earth government, to be able to discuss the policy stance of the world economy. And that's the idea, the basic idea, of Earth economics. So, when I want to introduce economics to my students, I want to talk about four basic issues. The first one is national accounts. The second one is short-term fluctuations, mostly related to gross domestic product, GDP, long-run growth, and public goods. Of course, some of these things change. We don't talk about national accounts because we talk about the planet. So what I need is planet account. When I talk about short-term fluctuations, I talk about fluctuations in production, I talk about fluctuations in inflation, in unemployment, but I don't talk about GDP because that's now gross planet product, GDP. And then there is long-run growth, also of GDP of course, and public goods. But I'm not talking about public goods which are pub, which are there for the for the individual economies. I talk about global public goods. International rules and regulations like the World Trade Organization, the IMF, uh, international security, uh, but also about prevention of poverty. So that's a completely new, full rich agenda and I can talk about this from lecture one. I work at the ISS, the Institute of Social Studies in The Hague. It's one of Europe's most well-known development studies centers. And this is the way ISS sees itself in the world. You can see Europe in the center and the rest far away. Now it's not only the ISS that puts the advanced economies at the center of the world. Actually that's happening everywhere. It's happening at the uh, International Monetary Fund, but it is in a sense also happening at the World Bank. Because if you take a look at the World Development Report, you will see that the analysis, the unit of analysis, is at the country level. 
So one of the aims that I have with this book is simply to blow up this conception of what Earth looks like. Earth is not a collection of countries. Earth is something different. That's Earth.